There we go. That'll make sure I have video instead of just the audio, which is not always super helpful. Uh, thanks. thanks. You're sharing video, um, not video, but uh, the screen, yeah. Screen images, yes. Screen images make the audio less than helpful. Uh, so thank you to everyone for being here tonight. It looks like we mostly have uh, our normal crew. Um, we do have one person on the phone um, who I, I don't <coughs> recognize the number if it's somebody somebody who's usually here. If not, if you want to unmute and introduce yourself, um, we can go around and introduce everybody. Hi, it's Kevin on the phone. <laughs> Kevin Feeney? Yep. yep. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. I can kind of barely hear you, but I think that's enough. Um, but if if you chime in later in the meeting, I may ask you to yell or something so I can hear you. <laughs> I don't know if everyone else can hear you or if my, my house may just be loud. Um, other than Kevin, uh, we Who's connecting have, to audio? <laughs> uh, that is Catherine. Oh. I think, yeah. Uh, I think she's having a connection issue. So we'll see you when you get here, Catherine. We see I see two versions of her. Joel, I'm going to make you a co-host again, just in case. All right. So I was trying to decide what would be most useful to talk about tonight. Um, we kind of left off last meeting um, with the assignment that everyone was going to look over the Excel spreadsheet and think about comments and maybe email me comments. Um, I did not get any emails uh, related to that table, uh, which left me wondering if we want to talk about it more tonight or if there's there's something else you want to talk about. I have um, started making a survey that I thought maybe we could go through that is a chance to gather information about um, what kinds of commercial businesses people think um, should be in what parts of town and with what amount of review. So, um, well, that would maybe be I'll, <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll uh, open it up for um, comment about do we want to look at uh, the table that we looked at last meeting again or are people not really prepared to, to say anything different or new about that. I think there's some stuff in the table to talk about. Okay. I think there's lots to talk about and we could basically barely get into it and then we ran out of time. I agree. I think there's a lot to talk about in the table and what's not in the table too. All right. Uh, sounds like there's somewhat consensus. So look at the table again. Uh, Jonathan, welcome. Um, we were just discussing um, at the last meeting when we left off, uh, people were going to think about the table that we looked at through most of the last meeting and send comments and I didn't get any. Um, so, well, I got some from Joel general comments, but I didn't really get anything from anybody on the table. So um, I think we will reopen um, that discussion. And then I also have uh, a survey to share about or maybe process to talk about, about thinking about commercial uses that would be allowed um, within parts of what's currently the low density residential zone, maybe. Um, so I thought we could, we could think about that next. Um, but well, I'm gonna start by sharing the table screen again. Good. Figure out the best way to share it so you can see it and not have it covered by anything else I have open. All right, so um, you'll all recall that in this table we have a few different sections. The first section is the basic parameters of the four zones that we've agreed on. Um, the second section is site plan review parameters for these zones that are outside of the Hamlet zone when site plan review is required. Um, and then the third section is the overlay zones, the stream buffers, the habitat corridor, 
and the existing overlay zone, the high vulnerability aquifer zone. Um, so we, I think we really only got into the first section. Can we get hung up on the suburban? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. Which is still a problem for me. I don't know if everybody shares the same aversion to the word suburban. Um, yeah, and we did have a suggestion to maybe just keep it called the low density residential zone, which if we're yep. keeping the rules mostly the same, I think is a fantastic idea. Yeah, because I wasn't, I wasn't keen to do that either. Uh, because, well, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, if we're going to have a receiving zone for a transfer development rights, the probability that that would be useful uh, hinges on, in my opinion, there not being a whole lot of, uh, what do we call them, you know, rights that, that come without having to uh, expand them. So, I mean, the, it's always, it's been bothered me for a long time that it, we have a one or two uh, residential units per, per frontage lot rather than just one uh, residential unit. But um, I do think that it would be nice, well, Kevin must have bumped, got bumped. It would be nice to be able to have additional units pulled in. Uh, and I like your idea, David, of, of limiting them though to, to four per lot. But, um, but having, a, having two to start with, eliminates half of the potential market, really. Uh, but I don't know whether others share that that opinion. Yeah, why don't we why don't we put that out and discuss that first? Um, so I think the the question is, should we, in our least restrictive zone of what's currently the low density residential? Should we keep the rules basically the same or should we reduce the development potential um, in part so that we can encourage people to buy development rights from other zones and transfer it in to that zone? I'm not in favor of doing something that makes people spend more money to get uh, what they've had in the past. It seems to me um, up to two residential units, there's, there's a lot of um, houses that are <clears throat> duplexes that have two different uh, homes in them. And they, they are sometimes, they're, they're not necessarily bigger and take up more space than the ones that are two side by side. I don't see why there's a reason to change it. I agree, I, for, all the, for all the zones, I don't see a restriction why you'd want to limit there's a lot of uh somebody wants to put a uh, an apartment in the basement of their house or over their garage it's not adding any more clutter it's um yeah i think a significant number of the actions at the uh planning board in the last couple of years have been people trying to put accessory dwellings um someplace on their property so i would uh for all the zones, I don't see a problem with the duplex or up or down or some uh, two residential unit over the garage or whatever. Not so much that I see a problem with it as that I see it as an opportunity. Since the, the since the thrust of our our mission, if you will, is to, uh, according to the comprehensive plan, you know, it, limit the development potential in the in the outlying parts of town and focus them in the hamlets the the, the, the our, our, our pre-existing zoning with its five acre density which essentially amounts to a two acre density along the lot along the existing roads was really inconsistent with that and led to a lot of development that is pretty suburban in character and i'm, I'm no, reluctant I, to I'm reluctant to to you know, can perpetuate that you know you know make it continue that that degree of development 
um, with even even within areas that are already somewhat developed in that way, you know, more of the same is is to me kind of productive compared to what we would really rather have, which is not a whole lot of development at all. And, and I that, think part of the problem also is if you look at some of them, they they look at putting an apartment over the garage. And some people may need additional income and putting an apartment over the garage is not going to have a dramatic impact on the rest of the neighborhood. I don't see why yeah, it's, you want to take that away. I agree. I think uh, it doesn't, you know, it, it may increase the population, but it doesn't actually increase the development on a parcel. Um, and somebody who wants to put the, uh, you know, a second supplementary unit is not going to, you know, moving it into the hamlet is not an option. Um, they're interested in something on the property they already own. I agree. Who was that? Oh, that was Kevin. Yeah, it's Kevin. I agree. Thanks, so it was full with Pat and Lynn. Anybody else? Yep. <clears throat> Good. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm hearing some interesting things from every everyone here. Uh, I'm afraid I don't share Joel's enthusiasm for de, for transfer development rights simply for the sake of development rights. I, so I, I don't see that as a reason to cut it down. What I do see as a reason to cut it down has to do with the actual density as opposed to desired density. So, for example, if you said if you if you were able to limit it to two but one unit per two acres or pick another measure. I'd feel a lot more comfortable with that because it doesn't increase the actual density. And the same way, if, you know, if somebody wants to add a, a upstairs on an existing building, I don't see any particular harm in that, although it does in fact change the character of the neighborhood, more traffic, more people, more noise, more light. Um, but I don't, you know, but I think that's an acceptable balance. Um, but the idea that you could have a two acre minimum, which has two separate dwellings on it, kind of bothers me. For four acres, I'd have no problem. Doggy standalone dwellings or a single structure? I'm thinking single structure. Uh, if it were within one structure, I, I think I'd feel a little different about it. And I'd certainly feel different about it if that was an existing structure that was simply being divided. You mean like filling in a basement apartment or something? Or something. Mm -hmm. um, however, the idea that you might have a um, super <laughs> a supersized house built as a one and then later divided into two, I'm not as quite as comfortable about. So Ted, I want to make sure I understood you right. You think if somebody had a house on a two acre lot, you would not be okay with them converting their basement to an apartment. I'm but not if they sure. If they had the same house on a four acre lot, you would? No, can, if it's within the same house, that's, I think that that's a different case than if you simply said, okay, you can put two houses on two acres, two separate houses on two acres. I don't know, you, you can chime in on whether it's legal to do, to, if there's a legal way to make that restriction. Well, we already make a distinction in that you, the, with, under the existing zoning, you're entitled to a one or two family provided it's attached. But then if they're gonna be separated, you have to go through the special permit procedure with the planning board. Right, and what I'm saying is that you, if you were building a new house, you should not be able to build a two family house on two acres. You could build a one family. You could convert a one family to a two is that with, with no external change. I guess it's it, what I'm thinking of is very nuanced and complicated, but the, the basic idea is not to increase the actual density of structures in this neighborhood. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, we're, we're, we're in the weeds a little bit on, the, on on what we mean by development density, because you know, I'm thinking in terms of dwelling units or per acre, and 
we had talked about and it, and, and it's expressed here as as one lot rather than one dwelling unit for five acres. And I'm okay with one dwelling unit for five acres. As would I be. Yeah, for I'm five sure. acres, but not for two. In other words, what, what, what it's expressed that here is that you're entitled to a lot for every five acres. No problem with that. Perhaps there has to be another column that says, how many dwellings are you entitled to as well, which says, in this case, you'd add one that says one dwelling unit per two acres. I'm just picking two. You can fudge the numbers. And so you could have, you could in fact have two residential units on five acres and still meet one dwelling unit per two. Yes, if you did it that way. Okay. And again, I, you know, even the I two, you, I'm just- I think you have to unit. distinguish between structures and dwelling units. Um, um, yeah, well, the swelling, the, the structures themselves, of course, have no huge impact on the environment, but the people who live in them do. Um, so, I mean, the development density is really about the people. You know, the more people you have, the more, the more traffic there is, the more activity mm -hmm. there is, you know, the mm -hmm. more impact on the environment there is. Uh, yes. And it's you're, that you're, 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 I said as much, you're completely correct. However, if I could drag us back to the early days of the conservation working group, the number of um, structures does, I think, directly affect the rural character. Oh, sure. I think one of the things that you alluded to in the past is that if you have two units, whether they're all you know together in one structure like uh, above a garage or um, a duplex or a basement or whatever, then you have double the number of uh, development rights that you can transfer, right? Well, the, the development rights I think are based on the original density. Yeah, which is exactly the point because you know if, if you if you go with the two units per five acres, that's double the density that we had. We even talked at one point about about going to ten acres uh, throughout uh, rather than have the five. But we effectively what we've got right now is not five acres at all, but two, and and two times two uh, along the road, two hundred feet, two acres, two two develop two residential units uh, per per lot is actually quite it's it's actually uh, well it's, it's two units two units on two acres it's um, it's almost one residential unit per acre is what it amounts to along the road um, I see Sarah has her hand up Sarah uh, before I comment I just wanted to be clear which zone are we talking about specifically so we're talking about the suburban neighborhood for lack okay. of you know we've discussed and maybe from, yeah it back to the low density residential zone if it retains the same rules if it has different rules i think it should get a different name gotcha but. um from my understanding that area is mostly made up with lots that are already similar to these rules correct they're like smaller they're not very large um i personally don't see an issue with having attached um, apartments or things like that. I personally don't see a, an issue with having two per um, two acres either, but if we wanted to have a compromise, I think two, if, uh, a two dwelling unit, if it's attached would, would help. I don't wanna limit it to just one since that is what our existing zoning has been. How, do, how would you feel, just to change the case a little bit, um, if you had a dwelling with a, uh, a separate garage and someone wants to build a small apart, convert the upstairs of the garage to a small dwelling unit, does that change what you, how you feel? Me? No. Okay. Me neither. Yeah, because we have to recognize there really are two cases. It's dividing the existing dwelling into two or add, you know, up, down, side, side, doesn't matter and using what has up till now been an accessory building 
and making it into a dwelling. Well, you'd still have to, accessory buildings have different setback requirements, don't they? So wouldn't that, that could potentially be an issue if you wanted to convert it, but not everyone would want to build their mother-in-law suite or apartment attached to their own home either. Um, that is true. Well, I think that's a good reason to have stricter setbacks for accessories. I've never liked the setbacks for accessories. Some of them seem to just pop up like mushrooms and they're, they overhang into the Danby State Forest. Uh, I can name a property in which that is actually occurring. Uh, so, it, you know, I think maybe we need to regulate a little bit more where the quote unquote accessories go. You know, I, I don't have any problem with adding dwelling units to existing properties. Um, I just don't want to increase the density in the zone to, to do it. So, I mean, that's what, that's the whole idea behind the transfer of development rights. You know, if we, if we're pulling, you know, the rights from elsewhere in the neighborhood in order to accommodate somebody adding on units and, you know, converting a duplex to a three or fourplex, you know, or adding a mother-in-law apartment or adding an apartment over a garage, um, why not if it means that there's going to be less development elsewhere and more retained open space? Let's take a look, look at this um, house where they're building on a garage and uh, apartment on Bald Hill Road, for example. And so what they've done is they've attached this, I think it's two car garage. I've been by it so many times I should know at this point. Uh, and they've attached it to the, the house uh, in such a way that they've used a little bump out structure that allows the garage to be attached to the house in a kind of L shape. And then on top of the garage, they're building some sort of dwelling. And actually for that house, the whole addition to me makes a lot of sense and it looks kind of nice. And it's probably 50 feet from the road. And they have some trees along the road. And I suppose once they're finished, they'll do some landscaping and stuff. And I, I don't have any problem with them doing that. On the other hand, I would not give them to de development rights. I think that that's, they shouldn't be allowed to development rights. What we're saying is they've already got them. Well, but I've never believed in development rights to begin with. So, you know, you have to remember that I don't believe in the right to build. Well, maybe so. But we're, so here we're talking about enshrining the right to have two residential units per lot in this zone. My understanding is that this zone was already um, in the pink zones were the ones that were already built out to these specifications. So basically we're, we're making this zone acknowledging that it's already been done. Well, and in that case, um, it's already been done and why are we spending time on it? Because they're not built out to these specifications. There are not two houses on every two acres right now. It's one house on, on each yes, part. and not every, and not all of the road frontage is built out either. But, yes, and and again, you know, I, the the argument that we would be taking away rights that are now available, um, I think it doesn't hold water when you look at the rural characters, where we're just definitely taking away rights. What's the difference? As long as they're already. Uh, a lot of it's built out in those particular areas. Um, what would mean could be a problem is building out in the back part of those areas. So if we want to eliminate the back part, something, if it's two acres and there's four acres there, you can put the back part in the green instead of keeping it in the pink. And then we left, left it. Well, the other well, thing is, is the properties were purchased with those rights. And now you're talking about changing it. 
Well, we're talking about changing it all over the town, so. Right. Right. So what are we doing here? And if, we, if we're not allowed to change what, what's already all over the place, well, we're certainly taking the wrong approach right now, if, we, if, that, if that's a limitation. Well, right I, I guess part of the thing is, is that not everybody's in favor of making some of those changes. Yeah. Right, you'll present it to the board and then people will vote. Can we get our grid back here so we can continue to look at it? Our Excel mm -hmm. spreadsheet. I thought it might be useful actually to look at the map again, just to remember oh, yeah. Yeah, so I pull it yep. down. what yep. we're talking about. That's what we've been doing. Um, I'm going to turn off some of these layers so that they're not too distracting. Um, but when we talk about how how built out these areas are, I think it's and she's useful going back in July. to actually look at it. So, you know, I think these are are some examples of the areas that we're talking about. It's not there's some truth in the the two viewpoints that have been expressed. It is not 100% built out. These areas are um, largely now suburban in character. That's how they were, were chosen, um, is that they're small lots. They mostly line the road frontage with houses. Um, Some of these lots are not small. No, yeah. yeah. And some of them are really quite large. I mean, if you if you just looked at lots that are five acres or less, it'd be a whole lot less pink. The problem is that there are a lot of lots that are very long and narrow. Yeah, that's right. true. So, you know, so let's, with what let's, I, with, let's play with that and see what what the reality is. Yeah, with what I was saying, if you had a long and narrow lot that was more than two acres, and everyone is comfortable with one house being built behind the other. I'm talking neighbor, not only us, but neighbors. Yeah. That, that, you know, they have, they have a house for two acres. No problem. If they, if we want them to let them do it. I'm, I was more concerned about some of the smaller lots, which don't have back acres. What's the concern? Yeah. I mean, we're given that it's already built up. I have no real problem with say with, with pulling, you know, development rights from the back acres in order to add an apartment to a, a, a lot that's only one acre, you know, it's already there. So I'm saying it doesn't make that big difference. It does increase the density, uh, and uh, it, it, it it doesn't increase the density if you're transferring development right from someplace else to that to that property. Uh, so that overall, you know, over time. You know, as people want to add apartments of one kind or another, um, you're de you're protecting more and more of the undeveloped land. Mm -hmm. You just say, well, you know, we've got these; they're already developed. So what the heck? Let them develop some more. Well, you haven't gained anything really, except for making it increasingly dense with more traffic, more people. Where Whereas are these one-acre parcels? Do we have any at the moment? Yeah, if you look at some of these little blue, purple things, you know, there 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 are some that are, you know, one-acre lots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at the north side of Nelson Road near Ridgecrest. They may not be one acre, but they're not very large. So there was a long we time when, when we had a, it, there was a period of time, you may remember, Rhonda, go back far enough, where the requirement was 150 feet of front and 300 feet depth. That's about an acre. Okay, so when we're talking about transferring from one of these long, narrow parcels a development right, to a smaller parcel, what are we allowing them to do? Are we allowing them to build, build a separate unit or are we allowing them to build onto the unit they already have? Well, as, as I propose it either. Oh, I wouldn't like two houses, two separate buildings on a one acre lot. You would not, you would. I would not. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's if it's if that one acre lot was, um, you know, the one on Ball Hill Road where you had the house and the garage and then maybe apartment above it, why would that be so bad? Um, 
Um, I think it just because of how crowded it makes everything look. I wouldn't even, even on a one acre lot, you can sometimes put a bed and breakfast where you have three bedrooms and three bathrooms separate from, you know, separate but attached to the original dwelling and it can fit well on one acre. But once you start splitting it up into different buildings and then you're talking about different setbacks and all kinds of things. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree that, you know, the, the, the visual impact of a building, even if it's a larger building, is generally less than the same number of dwelling units in separate buildings. Um, I think if anything, what we need to do is to really think this out and be consistent. I, I'm, I'm just curious. Since David, you're could you, can, can we, can we, can we get an idea? I mean, is there some way you're sort of screening for just the the the, uh, the uh, lots that are that are five acres or less? Yeah. Just a second. The outlined parcels are five acres or less. So you can see there are some parcels in the pink that are greater than five acres, but not very many. Mm. My parcel is less than five acres. That's 1.6 acres. Mm -hmm. Less than the current minimum. But in general, there's limited road frontage, several hundred feet of road frontage. There's no, there's very few parcels in there that have large amounts of road frontage. Um, I, I, I'm, I, I know I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but frontage was the topic that I wanted to bring up because hmm. somehow it, it, it has vanished from our requirements. Well, it's it it, it was, uh, but but maybe we should wait sort of put on the back burner, so to speak. When I proposed the three hundred foot rule, right? But then the three hundred foot then, rule, but then as it turned out to be somewhat problematic, right? So one could either come back to it by a uh, by adjusting the the setbacks from the from the from the side side yard setbacks, or um, or or deal with it directly with the frontage. And you know, to to accommodate to accomplish the same purpose, you know, a 150 foot side yard would do it. Um, but um, but it would be a straight jacket in terms of where a building could go on a lot. Yeah. yeah. Which might not be such a great thing if you're if you you know you've got a field or whatever. It's nice, it, it's nice to have flexibility uh, to accommodate the view and the soils and you know sp special aspects of the mm -hmm. property. Which might better be done by changing the frontage from from two hundred to three hundred. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So what's your hand, Betsy? Oh, you're muted. I agree with Ted on the road frontage. Uh, I'm particularly confused as to how far back this development is allowed. Is it? envisioned and to go up right up the hillsides right into the woods I mean I 
don't see, I see everything that is rural in Danby stemming from the fact that you have these long open vistas and hills and fields. And as soon as development can go way back off the road, uh, even if it doesn't happen immediately, even if it's not encouraged, then that is, it seems like the direct line to um, higher density of losing open space, I should say. The open space is there in the hills. So there's, how there's, much- There's you lots of develop, there's lots of development on East Miller Road that's way back from the road and I can't even see it. Um, no, it's true. And the same thing's true for the main highway. If you think about it, you know, we look at the northern end of town there with the, between Old Town Village and, and, uh, and the adjoining one in the Beersley Lane and Fieldstone Circle. Uh, there's a lot of development, but you don't, it's still not very conspicuous from the road. You know, from the road, it still feels kind of rural as you're driving down through, even though it's pretty developed. That's the, correct, the, but you're talking about, let's, I know it's a bad phrase to use, but the planned developments, right. uh, as opposed to what we're really talking about here are individual lots. Right, and, 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 and we've had very few, and, and that reason, that's the reason why, Betsy, we don't have much of these back lots developed is because it's very expensive with our current rules. Right, to, and I like those rules. <laughs> well, but um, I don't uh, want to see them change. Uh, yes. Well, we 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 could, you know, retain our our onerous <laughs> how we call it onerous uh, spec for a for a, a road, public or private, that requires it to be a fifty foot dedicated right of way and twenty feet paved. But the environmental impact of that is pretty big. And we're counting on the fact that it's so expensive to deter anybody from actually doing it. Um, I wouldn't that, count on that. What's that? I said, I wouldn't count on that. That doesn't seem like a very good thing to count on. Well, that's what our lawyer tells us is that, you know, using road specs as a way of controlling development is, a, is, a, is, a, is, is not how it should be done. Yeah. But the, but the Betsy, reality is that Betsy, right now- could I, Betsy, could I focus your concern are you talking about particular areas that you see in pink or are, are you talking no, about- No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not talking about pink areas. <laughs> if the conversation is only on pink, I'm speaking out of turn. I'm talking about the, the R, what are the, they called R- yeah, the, the rural. The rural, the rural, the rural one and rural yeah. two or whatever. It all seems to be based on density and- Yeah. All, we're just, um, are we hoping that no one will ever go back to the, uh, make roads going into the hills and making roads going back too far where people aren't now? Is that what we're hoping? Simply I because the road is expensive? That's the, I, I think actually the opposite. I think that we're not counting on that. And that's why we're talking about dramatically increasing the lot size requirement. So or that, the, or even, the density. So that density. even if they do do that, there's a lot less development potential than there currently is. Um, oh, you're saying we, that because the lot side is so large, it's not worth making a road back into the hills? Or even if they do, even they if do, they just can't put that many houses back there. Exactly, right. And we can encourage them to cluster the small number of houses that they are allowed. You know, so if they had 100 acres, currently they could build um, 20 houses and we'd be cutting that, well, they could build 20 lots with each of them could 40, be a duplex. 40 houses, right. <laughs> and we're talking about cutting that down to only allowing 20 houses or 10 houses instead of 40. But if some rich developer from New York or the Arabia or wherever uh, wanted to build a bunch of McMansions on the hillsides of Danby and 
drive a road, make a road back there, he could do it, right? They could. Um, yeah. We could require them to be clustered um, so that they use up a smaller portion of the lot. And allowing less of them helps with that because, you know, if you allow the amount that we currently allow, you can't really cluster very much because there's no extra space. We're kind of already at the health department limit. Um, but by cutting what we allow um, significantly, then we can have them put those on part of the parcel and have part of the parcel preserved. Um, we really can't just say you can't do anything. We could say you can do, we could have the rules be even more restrictive than what's proposed. Although kind of what's proposed is somewhat of a, I think a compromise that people from opposing viewpoints have pretty much agreed to come to the 10 acre number. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I wanna acknowledge that Claire and Ted also have hands up, but you, you finish what you were saying, um, Betsy. I'm, I just wanna suggest that perhaps there should be a limit how far from the road you could go in, but I don't know. I haven't been here enough to know if that's been discussed. So I'm sorry if I'm speaking out of turn. Go ahead. Uh, how about Claire? And then, and I, then I, I, I sort of share um, Betsy's concern about um, development going, going back. And uh, what I'm hearing people saying is no, what we're trying to do is, is to prevent that. But I'm just looking at some of these pink, these skinny pink lots mm -hmm. um, that are quite that are, that are quite big, um, where all the developments right presumably on a road, and, um, and 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 it's extending into the green squares, whatever that is. Is that? Um, it's one of one of the rural zones, right? Yeah, yeah. So and then there's and then over to the west there are couple of really big pink plots that, that don't seem to have much development on them. And, and I agree with Betsy that I don't like the idea of having lots more development necessarily in, in the back of those skinny lots. Maybe that wasn't what you were, you were suggesting. It would be the only person saying the same old song, but I mean, you're already seeing the houses by a quarter. Um, and I keep arguing this, you know, under the current stuff, someone can put a road back in a driveway that counts as a road and do five acre lots and put two family houses on each five acres. You're cutting it down to one house per 10 lot. And part of the trade here, it's a give and take. And I was willing to do that, but see you give an inch, they take a mile. And that's what I'm a little upset here. And the large landowners won't be here because they'd be cussing. And I have some tolerance not to do that, but you're not listening. You're not being cooperative. You're just taking, taking, taking. And um, you're going to have a lawsuit is what you're going to have because the trade-off was you can, and Joel put this in his original thing, you can build the back land without having to have the 200 feet of road frontage. And isn't what we all want, me, you, everybody here, to stop building up right along the road and having blop, 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 little houses all along and look like suburbia USA, and instead keep some of the open space, build up some of the back land, allow people to get their equity out of their land. The equity is in the ability to build. You take that away, you're taking away people's land value, their nest egg, without compensating them, and I'm sorry, it may not fit David's definition of a take, but it is a take, taking value, and it's up for $2,000, and we change its value by zoning to $50,000, you're gonna be mad as a hornet, and that's what you're doing to large landowners. So that's the trade-off. I know you may not like it, but you know what? Let's just go back to the old way then. Let's not make new zoning, let's keep it 200 road, a feet of road frontage, you can build a house, we'll get the ugly blop, blop, blop. Someone with a lot of money can put a road back in and develop all the back land and do whatever they want. But you can't have it both ways. You can't eat your cake and eat it too. And I just, I, I find that you're being, 
you're you're being you're not thinking and you're not being fair with what you're doing. You've heard this argument from me over and over. I don't know how to say it nice nicer than how I'm saying it. And you're just not listening because you have a five acre lot or 1.44 acres or whatever you're on. Even if the few people have 70 acres, you're not thinking that people have 200 acres, or 400 acres, or or you know all these other large landowners. You're just thinking about your view. It's not your view. If you wanted to be your view, go buy 200 acres and you'll have a view. And I'll, I'll shut up. Well, you know the problem right, so. is, and I think you you identified it, Russ. Is that we we the the equity lies primarily under our current rules in the frontage, so that's why we've been getting frontage development. People, it, it, it's the, the roads are already there, so there's no expense of putting in a road. So the lot by lot, you know, over time, you know, we're lining the roads with houses. So the saving grace has been that some of these houses are not right by the road and where they're not, it still feels rural, even though the density may be similar. But, right. but if you're trying to preserve some, some rural field, uh, there's gotta be some undeveloped road frontage, but how do we, how do we do that? And we, 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 we've, without, without doing what you just talked about without taking away the equity that the people basically already have because the equity is in the frontage now. So when it was a big deal when we went from 150 feet to 200 feet because people were saying, well, you know, before I could get two houses, two lots in and now I can only get one or I could get three and now I can only get two. So well, we, we, we made the suggestion that you say a house has to be 300 feet from the road. Then, yeah, then, yeah, right. then, so, then you're talking the driveway in, it's going to cost them more money. Oh, well. Too bad. Then do a cluster house where five houses share a driveway, and they don't have to make a long driveway um, by right, them. So I was thinking in terms of the, off the road, but, no, but nobody that doesn't gain traction. But when someone makes an uh, an absurd and way out there idea of one house for every twenty acres, and I'm not trying to put the person down and set it, but to me that's that's absurd thinking. When that gets put out there, everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you make a reasonable thing of saying, let's make the standard that houses have to be 300 feet from the road um, or out of sight from the road, if let's say a, a lot allows it for 100 feet back, um, fine. Uh, either or. If you put that in it, then we have rural character and allowed development. So you say you don't know how, that's how, and I've suggested it, but it's going on deaf ears. Well, well, I, I agree with you, Russ, uh, that if we if we changed our road specs or to in order to we could we could dramatically reduce the expense and environmental impact of new roads, you know, private roads. If, for example, we allowed people to have a road spec that was equal to a driveway spec for for accessing, say, eight units. Mm -hmm. then then you could put a you know then it wouldn't cost any more to to, to do a cluster of, of of houses than it would to do a single house with a driveway that was 600 feet long you would be opening up the back acreage to do that uh, mm -hmm. which would be you know but that's a trade-off that you made which i thought was well reasonable. No, but isn't it, is it a trade-off though my, because the, the, house the, and the, the, the trouble is is it a trade-off because if if it's a trade-off if we can say then let's not develop all the road frontage. But how do we do that? Because and otherwise we're just doing both. We're just saying, well, we're going to make it easier to develop the back, but no harder to develop the front. What we're going to get is both. We're going to get, we can have more development overall. We're going to develop the back because you can, and you're going to develop the front because you can. So but that's where we're at right now. Correct. Well, right now we're at, you can develop the front, but you effectively can't develop the back because it's so expensive to run a road in. But Except can, for Deputron Hollow and that whole development opened the eyes of everybody um, in town that, oh, my goodness, we didn't realize what the law says, that a driveway counts as a road, even if it's a private road, and you can do the back acreage. If you stop the moratorium today, and I wanted to, which I don't, uh, put a, a housing development back here on my property, I could just make my driveway a road and create all the road frontage I want. Well, except that the, the, what we haven't done is changed the road spec so that you, a, a pri, we, 
it was news to me that we could do private roads because we never have, but mm -hmm. the private road specs are created by the town board and we can make them just as onerous as the public road specs. And essentially what we've been arguing is that that's what, what absent any other spec, that is the spec. So you know, you're not gonna do a private road unless it's got, meets the same, same spec as the, the public road, which is to say 50 foot dedicated right of way with 20 feet paved, four foot shoulders, eight foot ditches. Um, that's well, we, we not, talked in here that that's, that's a huge absurd. environmental impact and expense. So yeah, but we've talked that that's absurd. You don't need that. I mean, no, I agree. Um, you look at Eco Village; they don't have that. No, they don't. They have a and plan to district. And if they allow their road to deteriorate to all potholes, well, then that's their own thing that they got to drive up and down every day. Not the fire department. If they have a fire to go in, they can bounce up and down that one time to go to a fire or ambulance to come to somebody. I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think they're going to let it get in the Russ and Joel, I'd like to jump in because I don't think this conversation is getting us closer to deciding how we're going to have the pink zone. Right. Um, well, maybe. But, but, but anyway, well, go what's, ahead, David. Maybe what's wrong with my suggestion then? It, it doesn't have to do with the, the pink zone. It has to do with the other zones. I want to also mention about the pink zones. Um, <clears throat> I know my neighbor bought the property and then uh, split it so that her mother could have a house there. And again, for financial reasons, they put an apartment on her house because she needed to have the income. She couldn't afford it on her own. I don't think we want to make it uh, the rules so that you have to be rich to be anywhere. Um, the other hands I've seen up were Catherine, um, Ted, Rhonda, and Kevin. Hi, my name came up first, but I'm already done. I would, I'll talk to Russ sometime. I was just curious to hear his absolute, his best plan, but I don't want to go back into it right now. Okay, thanks, Catherine. Ted? <laughs> um, you know, when you put the outlines up on this map, uh, I don't think I'm exaggerating too much when I say that, geez, it sure looks like an awful lot of the properties in Danby are covered by that, especially in the pink zones. Um, well, yeah, because that was one of the criteria that we used to create the pink zones. Right. Yeah. Um, to go back to my original point about actual density as opposed to average density, I wonder if you could uh, pull a similar piece of magic and color the outlines from zero to two acres in one color and two to five in another. So we could see how many properties would actually be affected if you didn't allow a second house on five acres, uh, on two acres, but you would allow a second house on, the, on the two to fives. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it would change dramatically. I mean, the places where you probably don't want extra houses. That's not really how it would work though. It would be, if you require two acres per unit, then it would be four and larger that could have a second unit. Just like right now, because we allow, right. you require five acres average for creating a new lot. Anything less than 10 can't be subdivided in the pink now. So even though we're only highlighting up to five now, uh -huh. If it's eight, you can't subdivide it now. If it's nine, you can't subdivide it now. It has to be 10 or more. Um, so even fewer of these are even subdividable under the current rules than it looks like here. These are just the ones that are smaller than yeah, five. Yeah, Ted's not talking subdivision. He's talking about I'm, uh, yeah, I'm adding, not, but, adding dwelling units. Yeah, I'm not. But David, did you mean the current proposed rules? Because yeah, obviously and can, the current rules. Because well, obviously current, we, we can subdivide at nine acre par eight or nine acre parcels under the current rules. You can't because you have to have an average of five acres per lot. So if you have nine acre lot, you can't subdivide it because you need 10 to have two lots. Unless you've got 200 feet of road frontage. Unless you've got 200 feet of road frontage, yeah. <laughs> That we most mean, of these lots it, don't have it, 400 if you go historically of we're getting an awful lot of subdivisions of sub 10 acre parcels yes because of the road frontage right does it i mean that's because our we're not saying you have to have five acres we're saying you have to have 200 feet of road frontage and two acres 
uh, yeah, I think that's what we're saying, yeah. Which is, I said, we have to get rid of this ridiculous rule. You know, it, it, the, the rule was, and this was a compromise the last time we did we did zoning. Well, when we down zoned from two acres to five, we essentially, the five acres only was true for the that which is not along the road. It's still basically two acre density along the road and five acres only for larger, you, you figure it both, both ways, recall, you know, it was either one lot for every 200 feet of road frontage or one lot for every five acres, whichever gives you the bigger number. Right, and that was the big mistake. It should have been whichever gives you the le lesser well, number. Well, I mean, it was a compromise with the large landowners the last time around because the, the record, well, not just the land, large landowners, the landowners at all. The equity is in the frontage under, our, under, under the rules, you know, for a long time because of the expense of putting in a road. So, so, so we compromised and we, we, we down zoned the back acreage, which is not under development pressure anyway. So effectively we didn't make a whole lot of change when we changed it the last time. Um, we may have deterred any more developments because there hasn't been a single development proposal on the order of Beardsley Lane or Fieldstone Circle since we went to a five acre density. Are you sure that's because of that, or are there other? No, people? I'm not sure of that because because the there's not a whole lot of residential development going on around the anywhere. county anywhere, uh, because um, it costs more. Well, people would rather buy the five acres on our existing road than buy a lot in the development when it costs so much to create those lots that you know you, you you're 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 going to pay the same thing for your acre and a half in the development. Um, as you would be to buy multiple acres from somebody in Danby who's got the road finished to sell it to you. So just so that we all understand how the current rules work and the proposed keeping the current rules in this scenario right here, all of these lots, the only development um, subdivision that could happen would be dividing this lot, this lot, or this lot, maybe this one. All of those other lots are unsubdividable because they don't have enough area or frontage. Right. Uh, so none of that, to me, seems like a significant character change that's possible for the neighborhood. Right. But, right. But we, right. But we. Right. But we. We. About, we're talking about uh, subdiv subdividing to put up a second house, whereas w whereas the proposed rules seem to be talking about more houses on the same lot without subdividing. Yeah, the, propo the proposal is keeping the current rule, which does allow that. Um, I can tell you not many people want to do it because it's hard to finance a second house on a lot is worth less than that same house on its own lot. Um, so it's hard to get lending on it. It really only makes sense if you own the property, you live on it, you have equity in it, and you're taking out some of that equity to build a unit for someone in your family. It's not really a, a profitable move. Um, that, that's, that, that, that's probably true, but then again, uh, we have this thing called the BZA, and if you, I'm just, I don't know who it is, so just, it's just a lot to me. Uh, right below the Y of Muzzy, you've got a fairly wide and fairly deep lot, actually two right next to each other. Mm -hmm. And even under the current rules, it's not uncommon for someone to say, okay, I'd like to build a flag lot and put somebody's house, another house behind it. Yeah. Not uncommon. Yes, I agree that that's possible. Yeah, with a variance in a road frontage. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the one next to it under the second Z is probably too narrow to get away with that. But then again, I, I think I've got somebody on Comfort Road who just did something like that. Like it was in front of the uh, planning board of the BZA. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, there's long, deep lots. I mean, there's all kinds of potential for flag flag lotting if you if you uh, change the road frontage requirement and the right. road frontage requirement is not a it's a it's a practical difficulty is what it is you know the the, the entitlement is the density yes you can 
just to be clear about what development potential there is, when we're looking at this, there's the potential for this lot to be one additional lot. So it's not all kinds of crazy development potential. There's the potential for one new lot here, one new lot here. Yeah, how many acres are those lots? Are those in the uh, eight, 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 just, eight ish? Just over 10. They just have over to be 10. over 10 to be subdivided under the current rules. A current proposed rules. And the current, current. And how wide are the, the those two lots? They're how just wide? over 400 feet wide. Oh, then they can be subdivided. They have 200 feet twice. Yeah, that's, that's what I just yeah, said. So I don't understand. I think it's my turn to talk anyway. Um, I don't understand how these lots got created, but I do know how I think the lots on Howland Road got created. And because I was around when that happened. And it's the same thing with these kind of long, narrow lots. And uh, a lot of people are unhappy about those lots on Howland Road. And it, it happened when the owner of the whole huge 80 acre parcel decided to subdivide. And I don't know how she, I, again, I, I, there are so many things that are wrong and I don't understand how they got to be wrong. She subdivided something like 10 lots off all at once. So I, I don't understand how you get to do that. But well, there was a did. period when you could do it ministerially, you know, when, when you didn't have to go to the planning board. Yeah, and I, Rhonda, you're off topic because nothing on Helen Road is in the zone that we're talking about. Okay, but so back on the Muzzy Road um, land, I don't, I, I, I would be opposed to anybody doing flag lots like that and building behind. I think we're getting ourselves into trouble just by even allowing, saying that it could possibly happen. Why? I think Russ, it would be nice to take all that land into a conservation easement. Sure, if they want to donate it. Russ? Um, well, we're, we're wondering why. I mean, Rhonda just said this and she didn't give a reason why she thinks it's a bad idea. Um, and then I had also put up that I don't understand why Durfee Hill, which seems to have lots of density, isn't colored pink just like um, Nelson Road is, like Nelson Road over by Macarena. Or Steam Mill. Or even Steam Mill, yeah, those are those are pink. But why isn't Durfee Hill pink? It seems like the same kind of character. It's even situation. more density on, Dur on Durfee Hill. Then look all those lots. It's not more density than what we were just looking at. It's well, Steam compared, Mill. It's uh, comparable look. to Steam Mill, um, but well, steeper slopes. Well, what is the criteria that didn't color Durfee Hill pink? Yeah, so, that's my question. Yeah, um, the part of the reason if we look at slopes, which was one of the criteria, is you got a lot more slopes getting in there. Um, well, that's back quite a ways from the road. I know that land pretty well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a couple hundred yards in places. Yeah, and it's it's not real. There's no cluster of these under under five acre lots, you know, they're kind of interspersed with larger lots. So it was a judgment call. And I think in the first map I had, there was a little bit of a cluster of pink and I got complaints about how much of the town was in that zone and I reduced it. Um, but I think we're, we're still really not getting to, um, we need to decide if we're gonna have this zone do we need to zone uh, at all? We, we really <laughs> are split between people who have said, um, we definitely want to continue having a zone with this level of density and people who have said we haven't. Um, and so I'd like to continue focusing on that question. Um, and I see that Leslie has her hand up. 
Um, I, I, I'd like to keep a pink zone. Um, I'd like, I'd like there to be, um, uh, I mean, I want to preserve open space more than, more than a lot of people, but I think it is helpful to have some places that, you know, maybe they're already developed more and maybe steam mill should be taken off the pink. Um, but, but I, I think it should be, um, I, I don't want to see the whole town zoned the same, the same way. Um, I'd like there to be some options for, you know, lower income, uh, affordable housing, whether it be, you know, some apartments. Um, I, the other, the other thing I was thinking when somebody was talking might have been Rhonda, and they were talking about flag lots. I started thinking about, and I know maybe in the orange section, the light orange, it's more appropriate, but some of these pink sections, even along the highway or even that section on Miller, or is that Muzzy, Muzzy, um, you know, maybe there's a potential for a real neighborhood and to have a road, <laughs> a road in the back um, that houses would be built on. Um, you know, uh, I know that came up in the Hamlet revitalization discussion that that it's it's hard to have neighborhoods without a road that goes in a goes you know it's less than five miles <laughs> a square um but that's something to think about too i don't know how that would happen but well if we know, maybe back, it could happen maybe. you know uh, didn't, we, we we could uh, as we were talking a little bit earlier with 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 russ the you know if you if we changed our road spec so that it it, you know, yeah. driveways were roads or could be roads, then you would enable uh, access to the back acres, basically, that, that uh, you know, more economically. Yeah. And it's, it, to me, the main thing is, that, well, you know, it, it would, it, we, may, we cringe at the prospect of having it be filled in some. Um, I, I feel better about it if I'm thinking that, you know, it's filling in, but it's only, it's filling in at a lower density. And then once you, 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 you and that density is still rural. And, and I think, you know, one dwelling unit in 10 acres is still rural. And if you can cluster them, it's even more rural. You know, look, look, I mean, look at, look at Eco Village, you know, that's a 70 acre parcel with 30 houses on it. That could easily have looked just like um, Old Town Village if it had been developed the same way. But it wasn't, you know, the houses were clustered and we can, but, you know, the, the market may not want to do that. The market may want to do larger lots. So you might have a road going back and then have, you know, five acres or seven acre parcels that, that, that come off of that road. Uh, um, would that be the end of the world? Mm. Well, just, just be aware that the style of living at of, of, of house, the housing density at Whitehawk is not for everyone. No, it's not. Yeah. No, it, it's it's a, it, is, it is, in fact, a very nice use of the land, but it's not for everyone. But if you're going to try to do affordability, you know, you, you could, that kind of clustering, particularly if you're putting a road, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So uh, I know, Kevin, you've had your hand up for a while, and then Claire. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, I, I, I don't want to reiterate everything that Russ said, but he very eloquently made a lot of the arguments that I agree with. And rather than take up time, you know, I'll say plus one on that, but I really do feel very strongly uh, about a lot of what he's uh, what he said. One of the questions that I that also came up that he asked why, you know, why are flag lots bad? We live on you know, what's probably a pretty extreme flag lot. I mean, the house here is 2,500 feet from the road. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what impact does that have on other people? Um, you can't see where we are. Even if the trees were cleared and you could see where our house was, it would subtend about one degree of your visual field standing out at the road. So, mm -hmm. you know, what's bad about that? I would much rather have houses far back on the lot away from the road where they don't block up a whole bunch of the visual field um, than, um, than have them up close to the road where they're taking up 10, 20 degrees of the space that you're there, you know, when you're looking in between the gaps in between the houses. 
Um, I think flag lots are great for that because they help preserve the rural character of the town by getting the houses out of your face and putting them back where they don't bother people. And in fact, in our case, we're screened by the trees. You couldn't, I mean, half the time the delivery trucks can't find us. And your 2,500 feet contributes significantly to fragmentation. Not that I can see. I can damn near get run over by things walk out and down my driveway. I'm sorry. Fragmentation is really a bunch of hoo ha ha. I'm I'm an environmentalist. I'm a wildlife management person. I don't have a degree in it. I've read, and I'm sorry, Jonathan um, uh, Zisk, but I've read the thing, and there's a bunch of holes and assumptions in it, and a lot of things that just are not true. There is no animal or creature or insect we go that back is to the farm by that. No, you're going to say fragmentation. It's it's a bunch of hoo ha ha. I'm sorry. Fragmentation is hoo ha ha. Wow. Just yes, stop. it is. I, I can have a private conversation with you. I gave David my notes in response to it. All right, Claire. Yeah, and I let me just put in two cents that Ted, Ted, my notes are not inherently bad. Ted, they're not. Claire, go ahead. Um, I'm sort of embarrassed to say that I'm not sure that I've driven to these purple. Um, developments where we seem to have huge numbers of houses in very mm -hmm. small lots, which look like major suburbia to me. Um, or um, are we? They are. are we trying? Hmm? They I are. What they are. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But, um, and I should probably go look at them and see what they're like. Yeah, they're but very really suburban. What yeah. Is 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 concentrate doing what I think what some of us are trying to do, which is concentrate development in places so that we can leave open spaces. And I'm just wondering, um, are we against having more purple areas or, um, or is that one way to keep um, those, those developments which aren't visible from 94B, um, keep keeping them, you know, a, a large area with lots of people in, uh, but not impinging on um, what some of us feel is important, which is open spaces so that the critters can get there. Um, I don't agree with Russ. Well, I don't, I don't know enough about it, but I, I believe that it is important to have big open spaces for, certainly for um, some of the birds and lots of other animals as well. But are we, are we trying to avoid having things like that or are, are we actually trying to achieve um, that in, in what we're talking about, say, with the pinks? And, well, that's the whole point of the, uh, well, the, the, the thrust, if you will, of the, of the vision and the comprehensive plan is that the development would be mostly focused in the hamlets and not out in the outlying parts of the town. So, I mean, but doing, but doing developments of any consequence outside of those hamlet areas is, is basically inconsistent with the objective. So why don't we design the rules for that? Make it hard. Well, well, that's well. You know, we should be making it hard, right, to do this outside of the hamlets. But we're still talking about suburban line neighborhood line four. We're not making it hard. I concur with that judgment. So there's, as far as I can tell, almost nowhere in the current pink that would allow a substantial scale development under the proposed yeah. rules. Well, I, I think the original point was not substantial, but one additional house. So I think where I'm at, as I've heard from Pat, Lynn, Kevin, uh, Kim and Russ, Sarah and Leslie, that they would like to keep um, the pink zone generally as it is. Heard from Ted, Rhonda, Claire, Joel, um, and Betsy, I wasn't totally clear, um, but I, I think you were in favor of not keeping it the way it is and adding additional restrictions. Is there anyone that I didn't just mention? Oh, go ahead, Betsy. Um, I'm sorry, I was shutting the chicken door, but, um, 
Um, I am in favor of restrictions that don't allow too much back buildup behind in the interior. Uh, I mean, what was the question again, exactly? <laughs> so we have the pink zone right now, which is proposed to have the current zoning. And we've been, there's been some back and forth about how much that would allow and where. Um, it doesn't allow any significant scale development, but it does allow, you know, continuing for people to be able to, a few lots can be subdivided and most lots could add a second dwelling unit on their lot if they don't have one already. There are certainly some that do have it already. Um, but I, I hear what you're saying there. And my opinion is not strong on development in large clusters of pink zone, where it's, for instance, going off of, there's just a small little cluster of pink. I think that should just be put in rural uh, RD1 and grandfather which, those in, but. Uh, which, which cluster are you talking about, Betsy? For instance, on Gilbert Road there. Gilbert this is a Road. small cluster of pink because there happens to be houses there now. Okay. Why I don't see the necessity for Miller. Gilbert, Miller. Miller, yeah. Right, right on Gilbert. Oh, Gilbert. I see. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that there's two different things going on here, and one is we can adjust the boundaries of what's proposed for the pink, um, but if we could focus on, are we okay oh. with the pink with the rules staying the same, and then we can talk about adjusting the boundaries. Um, it does, there is currently a significant majority that is okay with having a pink zone with the current rules. Um, can, and, we fix that? can we fix that ridiculous you know, 200 feet or? <laughs> I, I want to just make sure that I've heard from everyone. I think that is everyone. Actually, the only one I haven't gotten an opinion of is Catherine. Um, I thought I heard my name in that, but uh, I, I'm a little concerned about the road frontage um, issue too, because frankly, I don't see that flag lots are always horrible. And I don't know if that fits under the current rules that there still could be a flag lot in the pinks, then I'm okay with that. All right. So what I would what like to say get in that then is in that muzzy road section, you have all of these houses along the road and then all of a sudden you might have one house that's way back because it's a flag lot. I uh, guess I have to ask the question, how does that destroy rural character? Because you can't see the back land from the road anyway. All you're seeing is how suburbia. Necessarily about the view. That's, that's what this issue is all about. That's what it, this this moratorium is about is keeping our rural character and the way to deal with rural character and you're missing the whole boat is get houses back off the road but allow houses to be on people's well, land. Well, I would have never wanted all of those houses to be built right along the road to begin with. We That's understand that. I was concerned yeah. about how that ha actually happened. But so that means that we have to do whatever it takes to stop that from happening in the future. Buy it, Rhonda, buy the land and you can preserve it. Okay, Ted. Ross, I find it offensive that you tell people to, to buy things. Um, you no, because I know. bought it and you're wanting to take my value away, Claire. Well, I find and it that's that you're, that you're willing to tell everybody what they can do with their own property. I find, I find that offensive. Mm -hmm. No, well, we're dealing with this as a town and what we want to see as a town. But it's private property. It's not yours. It's not the town's property. It's private property. And under our free country, we have a right to pursue life, liberty, and freedom, folks. Oh, Russ. But, um, but this isn't really very, very productive, as I said. I, I would like people to feel as I do that we want to do what's best for the town and that if people say that you should build a, you know, a, a supermarket on my property, probably I'll move away. But if that's what's best for the town, 
then I'm prepared to do that. But I don't hear what's you. What's best for the town for values of best. best for the town. So, um, so I, I just, it, it, and, and just saying buy it, you have to remember most people can't afford to buy it. Ted has solved the problem. He bought 250 some acres, 260 acres, and no one's going to build right on them. If That's you don't right. know land, you can't tell others what to do with their land. I'm sorry. All right, I'm I'm going to cut off this path of discussion because it's really unhelpful and um, and that. really not true. Because this is a town. We have zoning. Um, it is up to the community. Zoning is up to the community. And um, that's then that's you're going to have a lawsuit, David, and the sixteen thousand dollars that the town spent with this BZA lawsuit is going to be a pittance compared to the lawsuit that you're going to have. And I'm not threatening personally, but I know some of the large landowners, and that's what you're going to have. You're going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars if that's what you want. Continue. Bye, Russ. So if we could come back to the zone that we're looking at, um, I think. We, the pink zone, a majority of the people here have said that they would like to have this zone. And I, I would like the consensus of the group to be that we can move forward with that, with this zone existing. Um, I, I have heard and would like to recognize a request from Joel that we talk about um, the frontage rule. Um, so if we're mostly sticking with the same current rule, um, he suggested that we switch the wording, which is currently you need five acres or 200 feet of frontage to get a lot. And he would like it to change to um, the, the greater of either the number of lots you would get from five acres or the number of lots you would get from frontage. No, that is, I think, the, that is the I, I think it's moot because all of these pink areas are already developed. No, uh, there's They're not. very few of them that have 400 feet of road frontage that you could cut in half. It's a few of them have a house. The back, it's the back acres make. that the back acres can be affected by that. So I'd like to hear the rest of this. The 200 that I can't I I can't really grasp this difference and I'd like to hear it. A whole sentence about it. Yeah, so I, I think that a good example of what it looks like um, is these two lots. So these two lots are each 400, have 400 feet of frontage, if I zoom in on them, they have 400 feet of frontage and they each have 10 acres. Yeah. Um, the way the current law works is if these lots were half as deep, but they still have the same amount of frontage, they could be subdivided. Um, if you switch, no. the way, they, they could because they each have- lots wouldn't have any road frontage. They've got 400 yes. feet. It, it's the greater of the two tests, either, two, either 200 per lot or five acres per lot, and you get the greater. So if you have 400 feet of road frontage, you're entitled to two lots. Right. So if, say something. I would be satisfied if those people only had five acres but had 400 feet of road frontage. And that this, the, the back lots became part of some other bigger parcel that was in the back. Well, yeah, Rhonda, that's, that's kind of what is at issue here is right now they could subdivide based on both. They have both enough frontage and enough area. Um, if we changed the rule uh, the way Joel is suggesting as being the, the lesser, if they were starting with only half the acreage, even if they have 400 feet of frontage, uh, the way the rule's currently written, they could subdivide it into two, two and a half acre parcels if the parcel they started with was five acres. Uh, the way Joel is proposing it, um, they would not be able to subdivide it at all because they didn't, wouldn't have enough area, even though they did have enough frontage. Or the reverse, if they had um, enough frontage or enough area, but not enough frontage, then they couldn't subdivide it. Whereas right now they can. I like the idea of the frontage, uh, but I would hope that that would give them some sort of 
uh, ability to situate the house in such a way that it it isn't lined up along the road. And that's that's when you get into these small areas of frontage, the person doesn't have a whole lot of choice as to where the house is set if they're if they don't want a really long driveway. And so if they have a wider frontage, then they can turn the house maybe and have a different way of pulling in or have a different way of pulling in. Uh, the driveway doesn't have to be so linear, it could curve, all of these different things might be available and we would have uh, be allowing more choices in situating and siting the house and building and with the help of the planner, they might actually be able to do something nice that would retain the rural character. Yeah, the flexibility. Well, Rhonda's in favor of requiring the frontage and the area. Um, Ted has expressed his opinion that he likes requiring the frontage and the area. Joel would like to require the frontage and the area. Uh, Leslie. There's an example on Nelson Road, if you could go up. It's probably straight north. Um, sort of in the middle, in between the highway and Ridgecrest. There's, I'm trying to see where it is. There's right above the farm, there's, there's actually what looks like a driveway. It goes way back and there's three houses on it. Um, I don't know how that happened, but- Yeah, we have um, places like that. So how the heck did that happen? There's, there's three houses, this, there's three houses. Yeah, this is what you're talking about, Leslie. And is this, I, I do know how it happened because it was a cluster. Is a cluster that actually okay. preserved all of this and most that of whole field. This. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like, I, I I like I at first I thought, well, how, well, that's weird, but um, it leaves the whole field open. Um, yeah. Farm field. Mm -hmm. Um, I I mean, how how could that happen with with Joel's thoughts? Where is the driveway? It's a large, it's a larger area and frontage, <clears throat> if it includes the other lot. So oh. the change that Joel is proposing would affect how many lots someone would get on a large lot. So right now, if you have a really deep lot um, with a relatively small amount of frontage, because you can go by the area or the frontage, yep. You get more lots, whereas yep. under Joel's proposal, if you have to have both the frontage and the area, um, it would be more restrictive. There would be less. In the lots. pink, I'd, only in the pink. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather be able to see something like this happen. Right. But where is the driveway on that parcel? It's right where the clicker is. It's right, right there. Oh, there. And there's actually three houses. The middle lot's got the little. There's there's, a house now. there's another house in the middle there. Even though it doesn't show up in here for some reason. Yeah. It is old. It's a new house. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I I like clusters. Uh, you know, in in terms of developing out, you know, be outside of the pink, if you will, or even inside the pink. Uh, better to cluster than not. But. So know, so it, that would that that would that would beg to say, don't go by the frontage, go by the area. And I I yeah. would, I would I would like to. You know, even at one point, I even said, well, why don't that. we just, we, we could, you know, get rid of the frontage altogether as a contrite carrying and just use the area. And yeah. what area would we choose? Five acres. Well, that should make Russ happy. <laughs> but that would be, but but I wanted to do it as, as a matter of, 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 of overall density. So, I mean, if you had, if you got 50 acres, You'd be you'd be entitled to uh, well if in, if in in the pink zone because that's the only one that's got five acres right right um, you you you'd be entitled to ten houses but those ten houses could be clustered and if you didn't have if you didn't have a minimum lot size oh, yeah you know, they could be they could be clustered well if if you had shared services you know a shared septic system they could be clustered in an eco village kind of way. Um, if you if you had to have individual well and septic, you'd be looking at lots that would have to be at least an acre, probably an acre and a half. 
but but it could be it could be acre and a half lots. So you know, I, th put I your think in that looking at it from a fifty year perspective, I think that uh, something that's using the density rather than road frontage is going to be built subdivided more readily than something with the road frontage. And so you're going to see, you would see people putting in a single driveway and, and then filling up the density uh, of the parcel itself because they're allowed, the town is allowing them to do that. And that- well, that the density, the density governs, you know, depending if, if, if we, if we, if the, if the density, I, th I think the density is the most important thing. Frankly, we can we can we can argue uh, all night and, and and multiple times about how the how the density gets expressed. But if we get the density low enough, the result it, you've got a lot more flexibility in how and where the lots get created. And 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 the end result is going to be some there's going to be some space left over. You know, I mean, it's just it just doesn't it's it's a lot easier to retain an undeveloped feel with a lower density. So I mean, I wasn't happy at all with having the, the pink zones the pink zone existing because it's at five acres instead of ten. But but you know, if we're going to do it, then 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 for heaven's sake, let's think of five acres. But and I don't. I'm not wedded to the pink zone. Yeah, but we've agreed now, so we're not going back to discussing whether or not we have it. <laughs> um, but what we what we are trying to understand is the difference between what Joel's proposed and the current rule. And I think this parcel is a good example. It has about 400 feet of frontage and 18 acres. So if you have to have both frontage and area. It can have two lots. Two lots. You only have to have one or the other, then it can have three lots. Yeah. That's the scale of the difference. Yeah, and that means much. That's another third uh, uh, of the population. But, but so in the pink area, yeah, what it means is that pink. you have nicely sort of allowed the development, and that takes the pressure off of the greener areas. Not as well. How would you guarantee that? Yes, yes. You don't oh. guarantee it. You just make a, make a place just like the hamlet. You 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 set a table. You make a place where it's more desirable and in some ways it, neighborhoody, in some ways easier to to apply for your 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 permits. You know, to if 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 the laws just make it so that you don't have to go before the BZA, then that's the place people will look. The problem is that, and I'm not getting off topic here, the problem is that some of these uh, court, what we're calling wildlife corridors, run right through these pink areas. Yes, and I so know. we're talking about doing the most building. We, in I, I know we can't, we're not going to be able to save everything. We just aren't going to be able to save everything. So we'll give up the otters. Well, no, I don't know if there are river otters there. That the river otters, you know, we've been watching their reintroduction too, and and that's not an area where they're common. Go over to Michigan Hollow, you know, that's where they are, and and uh, or Jennings Pond, Jennings yeah. Pond, a little with signs, and and uh, North uh, North Spencer Marsh. Yeah. So you know, the, the, yes, the river otter is important. That's a special situation you brought up, and it's a it's sort of a red herring because the, mm -hmm. they're they're much more opportunistic they anyway i don't want to get lost in, in the in the talk about habitat right but we aren't going to be able to save every single square foot of a valuable habitat if we're going to have some kind of development that allows us to really save certain areas it just isn't going to happen there's going to be a trade-off mark uh, uh rhonda yeah but don't we don't don't we want that kind of development in the hamlets and not outside of it there's some yeah. places, hamlets are one sort of development that's even higher density, but I, I think this, the pink area is more like neighborhoods. That's the word that we've used, broader mm -hmm. neighborhoods, uh, woodsy neighborhoods, rural-ish neighborhoods, but neighborhoods suburban is the operative. Neighborhoods. Yeah, <laughs> suburban, if you want to use that word. So, I mean, you need to leave room for that too. Danby's not just going to be woods and the hamlet. It won't work. Uh, so Jonathan, do you have do you have a opinion on? Yes, I, I like the uh, 
I like the or. I'm I'm sorry. I mean, I know that sounds like I'm going. I I sound inconsistent and like I'm comfortable with that kind of development. But I am in the pink area. Thanks. Like, I'm oh. in the or category also. Hey, Lynn, you and me. <laughs> I, I, I like think it. we're getting sidetracked here because see, yeah, most of this area is already developed out. Right. Talking, even regardless of whether you do your or and whatever, you're talking about 10% difference in the overall density of this pink area. Oh, it might be twice the difference. If if people are comfortable, it might be 100% difference that, that uh, you, you know, you have people who are looking at more onerous zoning in the dark, in the uh, crosshatch green, the green, little green squares, easier zoning in the pink, and they say, oh, I'll go there. And it looks like we could have <laughs> twice as many houses. Well, not you in, know, if we all, allow the this whole area no, along Nelson. This whole area along Nelson. Yes, I agree. It can't be subdivided. It's gone. There's only a few of these. Yeah, that you're right. Big enough to be arguing about. Um, right. Yeah, we, but we really are talking have, about. Yeah, I, we yeah, really are right. talking about maybe five percent one way or the other. Right. Um, but I, right, I do. I would like to just put this to bed so that we can move on to to other things. Mm -hmm. So I've heard from Jonathan and Lynn that they like the um, the or, or Dole and Rhonda and Ted so far like and. Right, but I haven't actually, let me, let me just actually address it. You're, you're, you're expressing it as a logical and or or, but in fact, what the public would more easily understand is the <laughs> lesser of 200 feet Per lot or um, five five acres, it's much easier to understand. The, the second the second thing is that if you think that the current situation, which allows the greater of the two hundred feet or five acres, works, look at what we've got. That's the what we've got is the result of it. It's already when you end. But, you but the, you know, the, only, the only good thing to be said is that we're, we're, we're just limited to the areas that are already pink, which are mostly already there, so. Right, in, not, in any case. We don't want to do that, that. El Keep, elsewhere, but. Those, those are real neighborhoods. I mean, they really work. Nelson Road is a real neighborhood. I, oh, yeah. I bicycle on it all the time. We live up on Durfee Hill. And yes, it's already happened and it's not a bad thing. Um, so I'm, I'm going to call people, call on people so we can go through this, uh, relatively fast and maybe talk about something else tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, and what I'm asking is if you want to be and or, or, or is the less restrictive and is the more restrictive. Um, and I'll start with Leslie. Start with who? You. Oh, you. <laughs> I want, I want the least restrictive. You want That's or. or. Or okay, uh, Catherine for the pink section. Yep. Yeah. I R or yes or. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, Pat. Or. Claire. Or explaining. Okay. Uh, Kim and Russ. Or. Did you hear me or? I did. I, I assume Russ agrees with you. Yes. Uh, Sarah. Yeah. Sarah? Or. Yeah. Or. Kevin. Or. Um, I think that's everyone. Looks like or has it. It, it does in fact. Okay. okay. So I. I, I, I think there is a strong consensus of having a pink area, having it keep the current rules, uh, no changes. And something that we can discuss at a future meeting is if we want to change, if there are areas that don't belong. Don't belong in the pink. Within, right? that, within that boundary. But I, I'd like to move on from that if we could. Um, and we're, we're really close to out of time and I really don't think we can look at the other zones with how much time just uh, confirming that this zone exists um, took at this point. 
Um, I would like to encourage people to send me comments about the other zones. Um, and what I would like to talk about is use. Um, we haven't talked about use a lot lately, no, right. uh, yet. Um, I think, you know, the currently allowed uses are housing and agriculture um, in this entire area. And uh, then the way the town has dealt with commercial development outside of the hamlet has been people applying for planned development zones or applying for rezoning and having one parcel rezoned. Um, in a way that's totally unplanned and just responds to people own land and they want to do commercial development on it. Um, or, their, or their home occupations. Yes. Um, so there is um, a desire I've heard um, from several people to think about uh, what commercial development we would want to allow and where in the town outside of the hamlet. So the hamlet group is talking about commercial development in the hamlet um, and changing the, the rules for that in some ways that make certain things easier, um, a lot of things easier and some things a little harder. Um, but the rest of the town, people have said, hey, why don't we allow commercial development on 96B? Why wouldn't we allow commercial development on 34? Why wouldn't we want someone to be able to open a tractor dealer or um, a light industrial center that processes uh, food products or you know, someone who wants to open a business that you know, makes computers or something like that. Um, you know, do, do we have a place in the town for those things and how do we want to allow them? Um, so I'll re reiterate what the current process has been is people petition the town board about a particular parcel and then the town board decides on a rezoning one at a time. Um, you can continue to do that. It is a risky process. It does bring up the potential that if you turn something down, you get sued or that you get sued by a neighbor for allowing something. People are gonna sue, the, uh, <laughs> but um, there, there, I think there is significant interest in having some rules of Maybe there's some kinds of commercial development that should be allowed in certain places. So um, one of the things that I have been working on is putting together a survey that you can respond to. Um, it's a grid of questions and I'm gonna share that screen. Share what the grid looks like. Um, and this is all in draft. So, you know, I, what I want is your input because I'm thinking that it would be good to sh share this broadly and we could get a lot of people's viewpoints. Um, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So this grid, it allows you to check boxes and it has a list of uses on one side. I'm going to read through them real quickly. Industrial, light industrial, over 10,000 square feet, small light industrial, under 10,000 square feet, large retail, over 20,000, medium retail, 6,000 to 20,000, small retail, 2,000 to 6,000, micro retail, under 2,000, uh, restaurant or bar, restaurant with a drive through, cafe, ice cream, smoothie, juice bar, a hotel, bed and breakfast, a garden center event venue for weddings or concerts, uh, a mechanic shop, a car, motorcycle, boat, or tra tractor, dealer, gas station, junkyard. This is a list of uses and um, mm -hmm. did that, uses. Did, that, did you think that covers the universe of possibilities? I think it, I think it covers m most things. Um, by South having these, you fit in this? these broad categories mm -hmm. um, because something like uh, if you if you keep it broad there's lots of things that fall under retail and we don't talk about some kinds of you know a video store which don't exist anymore but just for example is a different kind of store than a vitamin store there's stores so um, I've kind of kept to categories uh, lots of places get 
in much finer detail than this, um, but I do think it's good to keep it somewhat broad. Uh, the question was just asked about South Hill Cider. Um, I think with that, something like that, you really get at what is the most impactful use that they have. And I think they're getting towards uh, an event venue. Um, I think they're currently kind of permitted in their relation to value added agriculture, but if they start having more and more events and they become more of an event venue than a place that just is selling farm products, um, you know, you creep into that. And then the like slightly lesser impactful is a restaurant or a bar. Um, so there are places that kind of span that, um, but where you are really at with zoning is, you know, what's the most impactful thing that they're doing and is it allowed? Right. So I've listed check boxes here um, for a few options and I'm not sure this is the best way to do it. So I, I'd like your feedback on it. The check boxes are, this use should be allowed everywhere. Should be allowed on major roads, should be allowed off of major roads, should only be allowed under special circumstances, um, should require strong site plan review criteria for the planning board, should require medium site plan review criteria for the planning board, should only require staff site plan review, and shouldn't require site plan review. Um, so, so there are multiple boxes in any row, right? There are, and you can click multiple boxes and, oh, uh, I thought I could complete it, but I can't. Um, so for me, when I look at just this first one, um, to, be, to be clear, I would say industrial. Uh, that shouldn't be allowed everywhere. Uh, I don't think it should be allowed on any major road, or I would say that should only be allowed under special circumstances, and it should require strong site plan review criteria for the planning board. Um, but I might- Are you, are you really uh, asking for, it's two, there, there are four boxes that have to do with where and four that have to do with review. Are you really asking for exactly two check marks in each row? No, that would be better if you were. I mean- yeah. I, I think I am, but it doesn't really matter if if people don't precisely follow that. Ted, look at the major and off major. Those are that be two possible places in addition to special circumstances. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Ted, I, 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 I do. I do anticipate that there's going to be someone who says, "Oh, it should be allowed everywhere and on major roads no. and off major <laughs> roads." You know, that's possible, and I, that's not a problem. I can interpret that. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Um, but I, well, I what, happens if they, what happens if you don't say where it can be at all? Well, and is, and is, there, is there no possibility of options not allowed at all? That, that was that was my question also. Uh, uh, that should be, I think, I agree. That should be an answer. It should not be allowed anywhere. Are, are, can we do that? Of course. Yep. Yeah, we can. We already we already, we already have said on the basis of what's in the comprehensive plan in our in our uh, agricultural um, use law that you know Danby is not a Danby doesn't want heavy industrial uses and Danby doesn't want CAFOs. CAFOs? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So we we already said we don't want them. We can't we can't say no, but we don't want them. Um, uh, continuing on from what Ted said, I, I see the the four boxes at the exclusive, aren't they? So couldn't we have it that you can tick as many as you like of the first four or maybe five if we add not at all. But the next the next four, surely they should only just choose one, shouldn't they? Again, ideally it would be that way, but I think if somebody um you know, clicked that it requires strong site plan review and requires medium site plan review criteria. As long as they didn't click that and don't require site plan review, then I would just know they're crazy. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. I don't, I don't think Survey Monkey allows you that level of, uh, of restrictions on multiple Well, trucks. he doesn't think much of us, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Survey Monkey. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. you've got two groups of radio buttons, really. 
Yeah, yeah Lynn, Lynn is correct that I don't have the ability to to restrict in that way. I could make it two separate questions, but I think that would be even more difficult for people to look at. Um, and I think just having it all here, you I know whenever I send something out like this, you're the responses are not going to be perfect. But the point, the purpose is to get a sense of how. Can people, I do? Uh, Can I scroll down a minute to the list again? Yeah. So yeah, there was, so there was a question of whether or not this this adequately represents the universe of possible commercial activity. Uh, professional offices. Oh. Recreation. Yeah, well, professional offices is a good one because it could be a dentist or a doctor or something like that. <clears throat> right. yeah. Is there a comment section? Is there a comment section, David? I mean, maybe that would be where we could make comments, you know, yeah. add, so there, adding certain things or yeah, don't but I mean, allow it. It'd be nice where, to have it be, you know, yeah. so rep reasonably yeah. representative before we started to get feedback from the survey. I agree. There some so, so yes, there is comments. And um, yes, I think Lynn's suggestion of office is a major oversight of mine. <laughs> so I will, I will dance. add. An, Oh, Claire, go ahead. Well, docs and dentists were not there. But actually, I had another comment, which is that since I have a small screen, um, I'm probably not going to be able to fill it, fill it in and see what the categories are at the top um, when I'm at the bottom. Oh. So I'm wondering if you could um, just put them in again somewhere further down oh. or have, have two pages. Or well, maybe you put them at top and bottom so they could be halfway down. You could look at it from the bottom instead of the top. I mean, that might work. Um, if it's not too, yeah, that would be fine. Yeah. So uh, Catherine suggested uh, recreational uses too. Oh, if I see another golf course, <laughs> miniature oh. golf. Oh, oh were, how about a new one? It was cycling. just just the a category recreation, and that does not suggest that any of those things should be just a category. Mm. And I picked that instead of something like like the Indy Five Hundred racetrack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Low impact. Some recreation happens in buildings. Yes, True. a lot does. Yeah. Gyms. Tennis, indoor squash, tennis court, racquetball, right. all kinds are indoors. Yeah. Yeah. We can have an indoor Tom, tennis court. Fitness center. But a fitness center. Yeah. Fitness center. Well. Uh, do you want me to call that out as separate? <laughs> no, that's all. Like, I agree with Catherine. That's where I got the idea that uh, <laughs> just calling it recreation is good. It's awfully, isn't it awfully? Hey, so you're, you're, you're saying that um, indoor rec. Uh, Indoor You're rec. Indoor? A park and a gym are the same thing. The what indoor, is the same thing? Indoor rec a and outdoor. Park rec. and a gym. Indoor rec. Indoor rec. Yeah, but what if it's outdoor? Yeah, we'll That's have a weird. Weird. What about what about yeah? What about the tennis courts and the uh, and the, uh, the the four wheeler uh, race tracks in the mud? Race Those are pretty distinct. A motocross. Yeah. <laughs> I have that next to me. My neighbor used to be a motocross yeah, thing. That's not what I had in mind. Oh, my, my, my neighbor's son goes around on a four-wheel drive something. Yeah. Not yeah that's not really permitted by the zoning. Where does a shooting range fit in here? Is that part of recreation? <laughs> Stop that, Joel. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, I'm just, that's I'm just, I'm, range. it could be, you know, it's, it's that uh, recreation. The archery range in Dryden. Yeah. It's actually some of those things are totally silent to the outside. So yeah. I don't think we should. We I, I think this is a broad. These are a lot broad categories. Let's remember we're just in the beginning stage of this. Yeah, I think it's it covers most of the bases. You you make it too fine, yeah. it'll be yeah. There'll be a hundred like categories it. and I like it. So so the the thought here was to to to, to start to get a feel for what where we might be willing to entertain businesses throughout the town. And it was driven by the fact that we only have one area really that's zoned for businesses. And apart from that, we only, we only deal with it, as David mentioned, with planned development zones 
or um, as home occupations. Yeah. I mean, one, one of the things I always wondered about, we, you know, especially with daycare center yeah, and, right. and kennels, uh, dog kennel, you know, dog kennels, yeah. I could never understand those being on the highway. Um, you know, so those, those are two kennels. categories that there's a daycare center down the road from me on South PNB Road. Cool. Yeah. Um, now what, daycare now what center, category, dog kennel. What no, category in here would dog kennel fall under? The agriculture. No. Well, there's a no, new agriculture. It's all really. separate. Yeah. Daycare and dog uh, kennel. Um, put, you know, dog I care. I have people, two questions for care, clarification, if I might. Go ahead, Sarah. Um, I don't know if it's in my head. Is there a difference between what most people would consider light industrial versus commercial? And then mm. I know most people might have their opinion on what are considered main roads also, like what would the difference between the main road and an off-road be? I feel like some people could consider a main road just the state highways and then nothing else, but then some people might consider maybe county roads or something like that. No, county roads are not main roads. Well, I'm saying some people might consider it that right. way. Yeah. 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 Sarah, so if we're not clear, then... Yeah. Sarah, can you explain I, what I you think, mean I think that's by a commercial? You, you could if you wanted to just say state highways. I'm, I'm just, in my mind, something called light industrial is just more heavy use than what I would consider commercial. I don't, I don't really know how to describe that in my head, but so <laughs> commercial is just it's a just a term word for business. It's just another word yeah. for business. That's true. Well, if, you consider, if you consider a craft kind of thing that might happen as a home occupation, but you were doing it on a bigger scale, you know, woodworking shop or pottery shop or- um, Or clothing factory, how's that for an example? Or, or clo well, clothing factory, light <laughs> industrial, yeah. Yeah, um, light industrial is basically like making anything in a way that doesn't involve large amounts of toxic chemicals or odors or other emissions, which would be considered industrial. So, or noise, right? Yeah. It kind of seems like it could be like a bucket to throw a lot of the other things that we might not have like listed out specifically. Yeah. yeah. I think putting examples on, e on each row, you know, what, what is light industrial, what is industrial, I think it would help people a lot. I would like to change to, I always to, think, to no, animal no borders. Maybe it could Wait. be a, a a key at the bottom. You know, if the, you know what what what's meant by or illustrations. You don't want to clutter up the you don't want to clutter up the matrix too much. Yeah. David, could you change kennel to animal boarding? Then I think that's going to confuse people with horses. But it is all horses. agriculture. It's all agriculture. As no. far as the state's concerned, I, I think a dog kennel is a very specific kind of use that's different from those other the animal boarding board. facility. Yeah. yeah, it's still agriculture from the state's perspective. Dogs but are considered what, agriculture. What's the? I mean, we've we've put the stipulation that the current dog kennel can't can't expand. I mean, um, are you thinking that just the state has? say over that? No, well, it's just, that's not the case. Yeah. If it's a dog kennel, then we need a category then, as you said, for horses. I don't think horses. we do, because that, that's- Equestrian that facility. That's, it's, that's it's a farm. That, that is right agricultural. So, so um, that's not something we're talking about um, limiting. That's something that's already allowed in all of these areas. Yeah. Wow. And what exactly is an office? Is it, for example, a real estate agent? Could it be a, uh, a call center for, um, you know, for uh, uh, whatever you call it, spam calls? I mean, exactly what is an office and how large could it be? It could be all of those things. Uh, uh, well, I, I would variation. say that a real estate would be a professional Small. services business, but an office would be, you know, it could be any size and it could be any number of businesses it's not i don't want us to be thinking about oh i don't 
think that that is a legitimate kind of business. That's not a useful um, right. thing for us to think about. Um, an, an office is where people go and sit and work on computers during the day. So whatever kind of business they're doing in that environment. Well, then this, then the size of it really matters. For example, I wouldn't, I'd be fine with a small office anywhere. Well, maybe, you know, on a small road. But if you're talking about something which has 50 employees, then it may, we're talking major road for sure. Such as, for instance, the uh, school being used as the uh, the uh, billing, yes. not billing, but the, uh, what do you call it, uh, booking um, office for, for Divi Hotels, it was, was, it was at one point. Yes, yes. I think that generated a lot of traffic, though. Do you? I don't recall that it was all that bad. Yeah, but that was the, 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 that was a fairly small operation in a fairly big building. Yeah, Fair. true. I can't imagine. Uh, well, it's hard. You know, you have to look at the universe of possibilities. But I don't, can't imagine anybody building a large office complex in Danby. <laughs> you can never tell. I can't imagine David, could you an could you? In What's the difference? Okay, no, nobody really answered either of my questions, but could somebody at least give me, David, could you give me your professional opinion on what you would consider major roads? Is it only the state highways? I think so, but I'm also using this as a general gauge uh, as to, you know, I think I'm not going to, we're not going to go from this and automatically adopt exactly what the majority <laughs> of people say. But it's a, to get a sense of um, what, right. what, what why, people will tolerate not, where. Why not eliminate yeah. the ambiguity? State, you know, state highways is very clear meaning yeah. to everyone, and other roads is very clear meaning to everyone. By the way, uh, the breeding of dogs is covered under ag and markets. Breeding of dogs. It's different yeah. than a dog kennel. No, right. you breed dogs well depending on whether you're, you know, running uh, some sort of a puppy mill or whatever. I mean, you have to remember that I was the a former executive director of the Tioga County SPCA, and I had to go after these people. So I certainly know the laws. And hey, Rhonda, you're right off the topic that we're talking on, and I called on Claire. Claire? Yeah. Okay, I have two questions. Is it possible for you to just draw a, a vertical line um, between the four boxes on the left and the four boxes on the right, because they're an awful. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, and, and that that I think would help people yeah. just figure out where they are. Yeah, there are two sort of classes of things, you know. You uh, yeah, I mean, no. word allowed, and then how, what, what kind of site plan review of yeah. yeah. And um, you've got nails, and and you don't have hairdressers. And I just wonder, can we just remove nails? And, and where would you put um, sort of beauty oh, salon? Yeah. Uh, would, but that, that is a professional service. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it, it falls in the same category. Yeah, I mean, but a hairdresser is too, and that's... Yeah. Uh, it says etc. Yeah. yeah. So, it, it's I'm not by, by no means an exhaustive list, just examples. Yeah. Well, but I, I don't know. As somebody who never has their nails done, but always has her hair cut, <laughs> um, that seems to me hair cutting for men and women is more likely um, a more important thing to have than nails. Good enough, I uh, changed. I'm in the right. same boat, Claire. I don't get my nails done very often. <laughs> right. But you do get your hair cut. <laughs> what happened to the uh, not allowed at all column? Yeah, that didn't, yeah. That might oh, it didn't save. All right. Um, um, and and I, I, I think we have it, we have, a pretty much an agreement that you know major road ought to be converted to state highway. Well, we'll just understand it, can't we? So, so can you? I'm just wondering if we're sending this out to the general public, people might have different opinions oh. on what yeah. is considered what a, a main major highway. I don't know. It sounded like we might want to do that. Get as broad of an opinion as possible. So, so I mean, I, I I don't know which. So, can you tell me which are the state highways in Danby? Yeah, 96B 96, and 3496. 89, yeah. And that's it. Yep. yep. The north south major roads. So and that does not include Coddington Road, for instance. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't have included that. 
I mean, I would well, have those. She's a lot of traffic. Yeah, but just major highways, I must say, I would have just done the three that you mentioned. Yeah, it gets um, a lot of bicycle traffic too, and people die from all that car traffic. As, as long as you're thinking about types of roads, is it worth putting in a third type known as dirt roads? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's the what's Waste. the, the business is that would only be allowed on dirt roads? Junkyard. <laughs> uh, there wouldn't oh, be much. Of that I think that's <laughs> pretty fine. I did. Actually, a, bird, a bed oh, and breakfast general. could be allowed on a dirt road. What's that? I think that bed and breakfast too fine a se separation. Yeah, I agree with Lynn. Um. I think we've got enough boxes. Yeah, <laughs> David, were you thinking that that, that um, the group would would pretty much be the people doing this, or are you going to send this? Well, you could post it, and not anybody could fill it out, right? Yeah. My thought was to post it, um, share okay. it in in the email follow up to this meeting with the video of the meeting. Put it on Facebook. Okay. My South Hill Facebook page. Yeah. Yep. Mm. All we right. could mention it. We could we could put it on the website. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And then drive people with, there with uh, email messages or or mention. Yeah. It could be mentioned in the Danby News that we're it doing is. a survey without <laughs> actually putting it in the Danby News, but 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 um, directing people to the website to fill it out. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's time for that. Um, well, it depends on how soon you want the feedback. Well, let's get it on the website. And, yeah. And uh, yeah. and there's that email thing, right? The, yep. Yeah, I'll send it to the, the big the whole, email the whole list. list. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that'll, be enough, that'll be enough to give us a sense right. yeah. yep. for what people think. I do recall David saying that we could share it with friends and that's another way for it to get out. So, I mean, this is just an initial um, attempt and yes. it should be very, I think it'll be very interesting. But just Dan be resident. Yes, I, I agree that with Rhonda on that, if possible. There's no way that we can, <laughs> when we put it on the internet, know who's gonna yeah. do it. That's, that's true. true. There's really you no, reason anyone who you a lot of people who don't live you in ask for them. names or you, could, you, could ask, you could ask them to say are you a you know you yeah. could say this is a questionnaire for danby residents and at the beginning you can say are you a danby resident sure yeah. no, 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 it just wouldn't be such a terrible thing to know what others are, think about no we don't no 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 <laughs> So we have to ask them to self-identify as Danby residents. Otherwise, as you say, if you post it on the South Hill, you know, Danby South Hill page, and you have to get people from outside the town. Yeah, it could be anybody. Yeah, doing yeah. it though. No, yeah, but what, what what's wrong with just saying that it's a questionnaire for Danby residents, and then say, are you are you a Danby resident? Yes, no. Yep, that's fine. I can definitely yeah. put that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The answer is no, go away. Wait, no. Well, no. I mean, <laughs> we'll take their input and discard it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, great. We are out of time. I appreciate uh, your feedback reviewing this. I think uh, we've definitely made it better with your input. Um, so thank you for a productive conversation on that. Um, and I will look forward to seeing you all in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Question for you, David. Um, we really only covered the first three columns of the suburban neighborhood uh, row. Will we be talking in the future about all those numbers in the next uh, six or eight columns? No, I'm not planning on coming back to the suburban neighborhood at all. We're gonna focus on the other zones. I think we have a strong I... consensus that we're gonna pretty much keep the suburban neighborhood the exact same as the current zoning rules. We're not gonna change it. We're not gonna mess with it. Um, we the one thing we... Well, but the one place we might mess with it is is uh, adjusting who what what's in the, what's pink and what's not. Yep. And if well, we yeah. have a transfer right. development right. light scheme, we can talk about those numbers. But um, the rest of the things that are under the current zoning, we're not making any adjustments to. 
So the, the um, setbacks and that thing, so yep. those things. No, I'm, I'm befuddled by the proposals that are there. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. We will pick this up next time. Um, as I mentioned before, I would appreciate um, comments, markup of the document, emailed to me. Um, in one email would be nice. Um, some people send me a dozen emails in a day, and that's really difficult to keep track of and not very helpful. Um, but if you send one email with all of your comments about uh, the table, that would be useful. And it's something that I could share back to the group with feedback. Mm -hmm. OK. That's could it. You, could cause things get lost in the queue, so to speak. Could you resend uh, sure. the table yep, to I will resend. facilitate comment? That would yep. be helpful. I will resend the table with the video, so it'll probably be tomorrow or Monday when it comes. No problem. Out. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good weekend and a good night. Night, good night David. Night. Night. Thank you all.